Ella Josephine Baker was a civil rights organizer and strategist who worked for social justice from 1931 to 1986. While largely unknown to the public, she was regarded as the backbone of the civil rights movement, working alongside and influencing the actions of several prominent civil rights leaders and organizations, including the NAACP and the Southern Christian Leadership Conference. She founded and guided the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, which was organized and firmly based on her grassroots leadership philosophy and became one of the most effective groups of the modern civil rights movement. Ms. Baker's legacy is a generation of activists who used her leadership methods to continue working for civil rights. Ella Baker began working for civil rights organizations in 1927, at the height of the Harlem Renaissance, where she was exposed to what she described as a hotbed of radical thinking. In 1930, she became involved with the Young Negroes Cooperative League, which worked to establish consumer cooperatives within black communities. Her work there solidified Ms. Baker's beliefs in group-centered leadership, with young people and women taking active leadership roles. Throughout her career, Ms. Baker never tried to be the focal point of any of the organizations with which she worked. My ego wasn't at stake at any point. I had found a greater sense of importance by being a part of those who were growing. Ms. Baker believed that civil rights would be achieved only if people were committed to fighting for their rights and making decisions within their communities. She believed that the civil rights movement required the long-term commitment of entire communities who worked tirelessly to create real change in the world. In 1938, Baker began working for the NAACP, and in 1943, she became the National Director of Branches. The main goal of the NAACP was to expand the organization across the country in order to advocate for civil rights legislation in favor of desegregation. Ms. Baker stepped down as the national director in 1946 because she wanted to focus on community organizing that went beyond legal actions. Her reputation continued to grow as an organizer and activist around the country. She remained involved with the New York branch of the association and became its president in 1952. After the Montgomery bus boycott in 1957, she worked with Bayard Rustin and Stanley Levinson as part of the civil rights group In Friendship to form the Southern Christian Leadership Conference, SCLC, with a goal of creating an organizing base for Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Ms. Baker moved to Atlanta to become the executive director of SCLC, their first employee. Her work behind the scenes allowed Dr. King to move from one place to the next, mobilizing people through mass meetings. Ms. Baker's idea of leadership, however, caused conflict between her and the organization's leaders, African-American ministers who believed in a top-down approach to organizing. Ms. Baker also disagreed with SCLC's focus on highly publicized events at the expense of developing long-lasting community-based organizations. She felt that no lasting change would be achieved through demonstrations alone. While demonstrations did lead to important legislative changes, the sustained commitment of citizens was required to ensure that what the law provided for actually happened. In 1960, starting in Greensboro, North Carolina, black college students began nonviolent sit-in protests at white-only lunch counters. Students participated in 13 southern states and in over 80 cities. Because the sit-ins were not coordinated by a larger organization, the publicity they gained led SCLC to consider adding a student branch. Because of Ms. Baker's connections throughout the movement, she was directed by Dr. King to help add the students to his organization. However, she believed that the students should decide their role in the civil rights movement themselves, rather than be controlled by the SCLC leaders. In April of 1960, she organized a meeting for the leaders of the student movement. The speakers included Ms. Baker, Dr. King, and Jim Lawson from the Congress of Racial Equality. 
Ms. Baker's speech encouraged the students to look to themselves and no one else as the main catalyst for change in the civil rights movement. From this meeting and separate planning sessions during the conference, the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, SNCC, was founded as an organization with group-centered leadership and collective decision-making. Unlike leader-centered groups like SCLC, SNCC did not revolve around one well-known figure. Instead, members worked together to organize, seeing themselves as catalysts in building local movements. Ms. Baker soon left SCLC to focus full-time on SNCC, where she supported the students by helping them build the skills they needed to organize effectively and train local leaders. Ms. Baker never saw herself as the leader. She always cautioned us that we were not the leaders. We were the grassroots, the organizers, who were developing leadership that could withstand even our guests. By 1961, SNCC had two main campaigns, one in Georgia and the other in Mississippi, both working for voting rights. SNCC attracted hundreds of white students from northern states to help with voter registration projects. SNCC also helped to develop the Mississippi Freedom Democratic Party in 1964 as part of their voter registration project in Mississippi. As the adult advisor until 1964, Ms. Baker encouraged SNCC to develop community groups that would help to organize protests and campaigns. I think it's fair to say that without her leadership and her style of leadership, we would not have been the organization that we turned out to be. She guided their decision making and worked to keep the nonviolent focus of the organization. SNCC worked to ensure the passage of the Voting Rights Act of 1965 and continued to support communities during its implementation. Black mother's son becomes as important to the rest of the country as the killing of a white mother's son. We who believe in freedom cannot rest until this happens. Ella Baker inspired collective action in SNCC organizers that can still be seen today. Bob Moses, a lead organizer with SNCC's Voter Registration Project, started the Algebra Project a nonprofit that works to ensure quality public school education for every child in America through the building of coalitions based on the organizational philosophies that Ms. Baker brought to SNCC. Hollis Watkins of SNCC is now the president of Southern Echo, which works to develop grassroots leadership across the South, organizing around issues like environmental justice, quality public school education, and redistricting. From SNCC came a new generation of lifelong civil rights leaders who have stayed active in their communities and all across the country. Well-known leaders like Representatives John Lewis and Eleanor Holmes Norton, Marion Wright Edelman, founder of the Children's Defense Fund, and Julian Bond, founder of the Southern Poverty Law Center and president of the NAACP for 12 years, have all used grassroots organizing and local support to carry out their work. By modeling, teaching, and writing about group-centered leadership, Ms. Baker guided the students of SNCC to become community organizers in their own right. There's no overestimating her role in the civil rights movement. She was responsible, really, for SNCC's existence. Without her, the entire civil rights movement would have been different because SNCC was at the cutting edge of the civil rights movement. I'm sure it would not have survived without her. Though their methods and strategies were different, SCLC, SNCC, the NAACP, and other civil rights organizations worked alongside each other and were all critical to the success of the movement. Ms. Ella Baker's behind-the-scenes leadership throughout her extensive career stemmed from the belief that the potential to transform the world was through collective action, not the actions of one person and that long-term commitment was needed to ensure that the legislative and court victories resulted in long-lasting changes. Though she was not a household name outside of the civil rights movement, her impact on grassroots political organizing is still evident today. We 